everyone, I'm Sam Strider here for Human Hard Drive, and today I'm going to be reviving an old series, uh, it's obviously on a breadboard. Uh, I'm reviving this because I'd received a suggestion from a viewer asking me to, because we'd already examined the theory behind such things as resistors, capacitors, and transistors, that maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to look at the more practical side of that, putting them on a breadboard and seeing how they actually behave. So I, this is what we're going to be covering on, on a breadboard. Uh, each video is going to be divided into two segments. The first half is doing the math, and the second half is going to be on the breadboard. So if you're going to be watching this, I do suggest you watch my circuit analysis by hand video, which is going to go over such things as Kirchhoff's Laws, which will help you understand why it is I'm doing this kind of math. So by the title, you can see today we're going to be talking about voltage dividers, and we are. So with that, let's get started by setting up a simple circuit. It's going to have your battery, and then because this is a voltage divider, it's going to be a series of resistors attached in series. And what we're interested to understand is the voltage division at these three points. And we'll give these various names. This will be R2, this will be R1, and this will be voltage. And by Kirchhoff law, we know that this is one loop, and this will be our current. So let's set up our equation. The sum of voltages in a loop is zero. Remember that's in a loop. That's Kirchhoff's law of voltages. Is going to be voltage minus the sum of the voltage drops, I R1 plus I R2, and this I R comes from the voltage equation. Remember, voltage has to be zero, so we need all voltage equations. The voltage equation of the resistor, V equals I R. That's where that comes from. And if we rearrange this, we get V equals I times the quantity of R1 plus R2. And let's start assigning some numbers. Let's copy this first. Let's copy. There we go. Copy. And we'll move on to the next page. And paste. So here we'll say uh, the voltage is 5 volts. R1 is 100 ohms. And R2 is also 100 ohms. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. 5 equals I times 100 plus 100. And if we rearrange that, I equals 5 over 200, which is 1 over 40. And this is current, so that's amps. Now to find the voltage drop of each resistor in this circuit, what we're going to look at is the voltage equation for the resistor, V equals I R, and then we're just going to plug in I and R to find the voltage drop. So I R1, I R2, this is 1 40th times 100, and this is 1 40th times 100 as well, and so you get the same answer, 2.5 volts. Now we don't know what that means just yet in terms of where this lies here. So we're going to have to wait until we look at the breadboard and the multimeter to see what that actually means. Okay, and let's go over one more example. Paste this equation again, and we'll just change up some of the numbers. V will still stay 5 volts, but in this case, R1 will be 470 ohms, and R2 will be... 100 ohms. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in the numbers. So V is 5 equals I times 100 plus 470. So I is 5 over 570, and that doesn't work out to any nice number, so we'll just save that. So V equals IR, look at the voltage drop across each resistor, IR1 and IR2. So this is 5 over 570 times 470. 
And this is I, uh, oh, not I. 5 over 570 times 100. And if we pull out our calculator and we do the math, we get this works out to be 4.12 ohms. And this is going to work out to be. zero point eight seven ohms and again we don't know what this is, just means just yet in relation to our original circuit diagram but we can look here and see that our original voltage being five volts and the division if you add them both up come to five volts which you'd expect given that the sum has to equal the original input so with that let's go ahead and put this circuit together on a breadboard and see what these numbers actually mean. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I got the breadboard. You're going to need a multimeter to see this. I've got a couple jumpers, um, some alligator clips. And for this, obviously, the most important thing is going to be the resistors. And I am going to be using the resistors I did in the math. So this one here is 100 ohm. So if we test that, see on the display, there, 100 ohms. And this one is 470 ohms. I'm going to set this up one. I read it. There you go. 0.462 in the kilo ohm range, because mine doesn't go over 200 ohms. All right, so the thing about breadboards is that I'll, I'm using the Arduino solely as a power supply for this. The thing about breadboards is the way they're wired. And they're wired across like this. So all these are hooked up to the same piece of metal. So that these will all be hooked up, but these two adjacent will not be hooked up, and we're going to use that to our advantage. Now, the first circuit we're going to set up is the 200 ohm resistors in series. So what I'm going to do is just hook this up here into separate columns, or rows in this case. And then I'll set the other one into another set of columns, or rows in this case. And there we go. With the middle two, with the middle two jumpers in the same route. Okay, so once you've got that, you're gonna take the jumpers, hook one to the top resistor, like so, and I'm gonna hook that up to the five volt line on the Arduino, and then the bottom end of the bottom resistor to ground, and that's it. So if we plug this in, it should now be getting power. And we can test that if we set this to voltage. And I measure the voltage difference between the top and bottom resistor. I should say five volts. If I hook the ground up to the right, the, there we go. If I hook this up, I should see roughly five volts. Okay, so that we know then that the reference from top to bottom is five volts. So the voltage found here, the voltage division at the top is 1 to 1, so that's 5 volts. Now if we look at the middle, we get roughly 2.46, about half the voltage. So that remember that 2.5 we found? That 2.5 is halfway between, so it's half the voltage. So when the two resistors are the same, you know that the voltage division at the middle is 1 half and the voltage at the top is the sum of this, of the two 2.5s, which will give you the original five volts. And the voltage at the bottom is zero because it's connected directly to ground. So that's voltage division with the two resistors that are exactly the same. Now, if we were to substitute out the bottom one, or rather not the bottom one, the top one, for the 470 ohm, and do the same thing, we would find that the voltage at the top is still 5 volts, and the voltage at the middle this time is 0.87. So that 0.87 corresponds to the middle voltage, and if you remember that voltage drop was found by calculating R2, not R1. R, the voltage drop at the R1 junction between 5 volts and R1 is the sum of the 
two voltage drops across the two resistors. This one is dropping, was it 4.12 volts, and this one has to drop 0.8 volts. So that's the difference between the two. This one, because it's dropping here, it shows up when you compare it to ground. And so that's really it for voltage dividers on a breadboard. Uh, I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.